Welcome everybody to the Monday live stream. I got to tell you, I love these days because there is literally nothing that we have to do except just sit back and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Because essentially what we did in the bear market for all that time, all that time that we got laughed at and people were saying, this is ridiculous. Why would you uh, invest in something that's going to zero? These are the days that I love because we exactly don't have to do anything. And if you don't know, uh, there's a little little mini rally going on today. And uh, it's a quite, a quite a jump for the largest crypto out there, which will be Bitcoin. Because it's very difficult to move Bitcoin, you know, 1%, 3%. But to go, to go almost 6 7% in 24 hours, and actually in our 12 hours, is something to sit up and take notice. As a matter of fact, in the last 24 hours, the volume has been 33 billion, 817 million, 697,421. And the market cap is well over a trillion. Now we're at 1.69 trillion. And the market cap itself, the entire crypto market is almost 2.2 trillion. Now, the largest that we've gone is around 3.1, 3.2 trillion dollars for the entire market cap. Correct me in the comments section, which was back in uh, roughly November of 2021. But I got to tell you, and I've been telling, saying this for quite some time, is that uh, we are extremely early, and we've seen signs of that. We've gone through the DCA list. We've taken a look at the amount from going from uh, the last all-time highs to the halving periods from 2013, the highs to the 2016 to the uh, to the halving. We did the same thing for 2016 and 2020 or 2021. And now we're taking a look at it again, and we're just way ahead of things. Hold on one sec. Let me let me close this green screen. There we go. That's better. Green screen gets a little loud. And uh, across the board, we're looking pretty good. Ethereum's up. I mean, Ethereum's almost at 3.2. That's not too bad. And you know what? If you look at, let me see something. Coming into Bitcoin real quick. Wow, look at that. 24 hours. We topped, I think, at 50, ooh, almost 55K. You know those round numbers, people like to take profits. So uh, that's a pretty good run for, uh, what, 12 hours, somewhere around there. So, yeah. And then, of course, why? The question always is why. Why did this happen? Why, Rob? Why is, it, is Bitcoin going up? Why did it happen right now? Well, there's a lot of theories out there. And frankly, I don't really care. I don't really care because someone will tell you something and somebody else will say something else. And this is the reason. But behind it, really what it all is is there's a lot of money sloshing around and there's things that we'll never know about. I'm just here along for the ride and dollar cost averaging. So just appreciate for what it is. And I will remind everybody that this, again, is that if you're here right now, I appreciate you. I appreciate you because we don't have the tourists here yet and I hate those guys. So I just wanted to, I put this out on Twitter this morning. I said, hey, congrats to everyone who bought don't feel bad when you sell your bags. And I know some of you have got bags that look like this. I'm myself included. But remember this, you did all the hard work. You provided liquidity during these really hard times, to these projects that need the liquidity to keep going, to actually make it out of this bear market. So congratulations for what you did. Now, don't feel bad for dumping on people. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to dump on everybody I possibly can. Because my job as an investor is to make sure that these markets, these projects keep going and they build and they become strong. I did my part. Now the tourists that come in, now it's their part. There's no free rides. I don't care what you, I don't care what you say. There's no free rides. We did the, we did the tough lifting. And just to reiterate this, because some people say, Rob, I can be so mean and dump on people. It's because of this. I put this out in January and I said, look. I, and this is when everything was going down like 10%, 8%, 10 15 20%. And I said, dump it. Dump it on me. I'll buy all your bags. I said, but do not complain to me when everything goes up 10 20 50 100x, and I unload on everybody. That's just how it is. So it's that little piece that's, uh, again, why I'm happy today, because we did our hard job. So congratulations, everybody. We made it. Now, there is something to take notice of, which is there was a new player in the game, not of ETFs, but uh, investments, investment advisors. And a $30 billion financial advisor platform approves only four Bitcoin ETFs. This is a per Bloomberg. Here's what we got. So Carson Group, a $30 billion registered 
registered investment advisor platform has approved only four ETFs, leaving out the majority of funds currently available to investors. So essentially what this is, is you know they are an investment advisor. They have a lot of their employees. They say, look, offer this to our customers, but you can only use these four ETF groups, which are BlackRock, Fidelity, Franklin Templeton, and Bitwise. Nobody else. You can't use anybody else, which is fine. I don't really care who wins. I'm like, I don't really care. I'm glad that uh, they picked this up. This is good. And I think this is the narrative that gets pushed. The narrative probably becomes something like this. Like, look, we know we were making fun of Bitcoin a couple of years ago, but now that it's going up and, you know, BlackRock came in and then there's this MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor and, of course, his legal tender in El Salvador. And then we've been talking about it. And, then, of course, the SEC has lost a couple of different uh, uh, high-profile cases. Yeah, yeah, don't, 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 don't remember that. What we're talking about is now and right now. And we know it's really high price, but we think it's going to go higher, so maybe you should get in now. <laughs> ah, we front ran those guys. So that's great. And, uh, you know, that's going to be the narrative moving forward. I'm happy for it. And uh, just to give you some context here, there's BlackRock Fidelity Bitwise. Those are the three. They didn't include, include ARC or Invesco. They did include Franklin Templeton, Valkyrie, Vanek, Wisdom Tree, and definitely not the scourge of the ETF world, which is Grayscale. Like, no, 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 we're not going to allow that. We're not going to allow you to go in that way. Just these four, which is, again, like I said, fine. And uh, on, I did this show. I did this show, I think it was on Thursday or Friday. And I read this completely wrong. And everybody in the comments were like, Rob, that's not in Bitcoin. That's in dollars. I'm like, oh, my God. Sometimes I, I just keep thinking in, in Bitcoin. But regardless, just so you know, in the upper right-hand corner where it says total spot ETF, that's in billions. Well, it's in millions, but it's 5 billion, 510 million. That's the total spot ETF as of 23rd of February, which is Friday. Now, of course, today I think we're on the 26th, so those numbers aren't in. But you're going to see that uh, the biggest dumper of all was Grayscale for obvious reasons. We talked about this. You know, FTX has to unload and build like the 1.5% and they're moving things around. It's fine. BlackRock, Fidelity, Bitwise, they're doing the big majority of, uh, of the numbers. Also, ARC is actually doing more than Bitwise, matter of fact. I did not notice that. 1.4 billion. It's an interesting that they got left out. That's a bummer, but I think they'll be okay. And uh, just moving across the board, it's been pretty well. But just so you know, Grayscale had their lowest output on Friday, which is looking pretty good. So I'm happy for that. Everybody's happy. Everybody's having a good time. But there are some things we have to watch out for because not everything is great, right? On this channel... I can't, sorry, green screen. On this channel, I can't make everything super positive because it goes against my nature. I like to, you know, give you the light and the darkness in there so you're aware, so you don't get too exuberant and I can bring you back down to earth just a little bit. And that is unfortunately the people that are going to come back. And there's two things I wanted to bring up. And this is from user blah, blah, blah. He says, uh, uh, Rob, and we were talking about crypto loans and, and you know, talking about the, the possibility of potentially selling your Bitcoin if you ever want to do. I don't know what your, your plans are. But he said, uh, he or she or they, they said, Rob, just because it didn't work out for you, meaning taking loans against uh, your collateral, doesn't mean it's not possible in the future. Celsius was a scam, which is horrible but the space always evolves. I would like to see some YouTubers dive deep into the taking loans against because it's something that most people don't understand. It would really be helpful for many people, but hardly anyone covers it because I don't think it's an easy topic to be an expert on. First of all, two things. True, it's difficult to be an expert on pretty much anything, but I have some pretty good experience in this area and just take it for what it's worth. Loans are travesty. And from what I've seen so far, I just do not see how they're going to work. If you're going to take a loan out for your crypto, any reasonable, responsible organization is going to have you put up collateral. Now they could pull a Voyager and do something incredibly stupid and let you post that without collateral, like what Voyager did to Three Arrows Capital, $630 million on collateralized loan. Why was that? Nobody knows. 
stupidity, arrogance, who knows? But they will, and they're going to ask for a collateral. So if you want to put up 200%, 300%, or 400% of, uh, of your Bitcoin, uh, have at it. But I, uh, I will tell you that when margin calls come, and they'll come because nothing goes up forever, and these businesses will go down. They will, just like the, just like Celsius, just like all the rest of them. I'm not saying they'll all fail, but I'm just saying that for me, it's not in my interest to do these things. And uh, you can do whatever you want to. This is just my experiences, and I think we're going to see more of this moving forward. So there's that piece. And then also, ugh, that was kind of a bummer after that nice, that nice bullish talk. Let's go back to that chart, shall we? Ah, oh, look at that sweet chart. No one cares what Rob says because look at that. Very nice. Not only that. Ah, what's the big gains today? Let's see, Avalanche is up 5%. It's pretty good. Polygon, 9%. Wow. 3.4% for ICP. Shiba Inu is up 3.6. 13% for Near Protocol. 2.5 for ETH Classic. All right. BitTensor. So, man, look at V chain. You know, I have some V chain hanging around. I should probably dig that stuff up. 14%. Anyhow, uh, that's the good stuff. Uh, let's move on to some bad stuff. Uh, taxes. Sorry about this. <laughs> Sorry about this, but I have to say it. I have to say this. Um, somebody's going to get put in prison. This is from Sheehan, friend of the show, Sheehan Chandra Zakara. He is a uh, CPA specializes in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And he uh, puts out a tweet today, and it was fascinating. He said, this month, federal prosecutors brought the first pure legal crypto tax indictment against a Texas individual. First of all, let me just tell you right now, this was not me. I don't even live in Texas anymore. I live in Puerto Rico. But uh, this happened. So this is kind of important. Just because when people say, ah, I don't need to pay taxes, I mean, you can try it. Wesley Snipes, Al Capone, yeah, whoever you want to do. Anyhow, the individual sold 3.7 million of Bitcoin and they bought a house. Nothing wrong with that. 2017 tax return, they falsely inflated the cost basis of Bitcoin to reduce capital gains, saying, yeah, yeah, I didn't buy it at this point. I didn't buy Bitcoin at $1,000. I bought it at $20,000. Ha ha. It didn't work out. 2018, 2019 tax returns, they failed to report 650,000 in Bitcoin sales. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, four, structured earnings sold Bitcoin in exchange and made a series of bank deposits of the cash in amounts less than 10,000, each to avoid triggering currency transaction reporting requirements. So, I mean, I get it. No one wants to pay taxes, right? I get it. He faces a maximum penalty of five years in prison, but not just five years straight. It's five years for each count. For each structuring count and three years in prison for each false return count. So I know he had two false returns. That's six years. Five years for structuring. Uh, I guess that's only one. So that's, you know, I, I could be wrong here, but he's looking at like 11 years maximum. He might just face a couple of years. I don't know. Per the IRS Criminal Investigation Unit, now more than half of crypto-related caseload involves tax evasion cases. Let me say that again. Per the IRS Criminal Investigation Unit, now more than half of crypto-related caseload. I guess it's not all caseload, just crypto caseload. It involves tax evasion cases concerning individuals who engage in legitimate transactions involving digital assets but committed tax evasion by failing to report or falsely reporting their transactions. Look. I don't like the IRS any more than you do. You know, it's not like I'm like super happy to pay taxes. And now people will ask me, but you're in Puerto Rico, you don't pay taxes. Untrue. So for capital gains, everything that I brought over from 2021, I still have to pay taxes on all those cryptos. So I accumulated in 2022 and 2023. And when I sell later, yeah, I'm good. But I'm still having to pay taxes back then. So don't think that I'm just, you know, off scot-free. So when these stories come out, I just want everybody to be aware of what could potentially happen. I don't want, I want to see everybody happy and, you know, be able to live their life 
besides having the stress of being audited and go through uh, tax evasion, stuff like that. I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying this is the things. Now, I understand the taxes are a little bit cumbersome. I got you. So this week, I invited Jordan Bass on. He is a CPA, founder of Tax and Cryptocurrency, a firm specializing in cryptocurrency taxation. So uh, I'll have Jordan on. And uh, he is from, he's one of the CPAs that works with Coin Ledger. And uh, we're going to be here on Thursday. I think it's at uh, 3 or 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll put out the information. And you can ask us any question you want. Any question that you have as far as taxes, what about with Celsius? And I got some something back. What about with Voyager? What about with the FTX? What about with moving things? We'll answer all your questions to the best of our abilities and go from there. And uh, of course, you know, Coin Ledger, pretty good stuff. If you uh, would like to do some of your taxes, this would be the one that I've used three straight years. So links in the description, you can check that out. But there's one more thing I'd like to talk about, which is this. Um, I know, I believe we're way ahead of schedule. Like we've talked about this, right? But did you know we're like at, if we're at 55, you know we're like $15,000 away from an all-time high for Bitcoin? Actually, $14,000, really? So look at this. The first halving was in November 2012. The price of Bitcoin during that time frame of 2012 was 12 bucks. And then in 2013, it was $1,100. The second halving was 2016. It was 650 bucks, which is quite a big jump. And the price after the halving actually was around 20,000. That was the all time high, 19.6, somewhere around there. And the third halving, which was uh, actually May 11th, I believe, 2020, it was 8,500 bucks back then. 8,500 bucks. We're at 54, almost 55,000. What do you think we're going to be in two months? We might be at the all time high, which would be insane to think about. Insane. And like I said, we're way ahead of schedule. So the price of Bitcoin after having, of course, was 69,000, we could actually hit that. I don't know if it's it's real. I'm sure the TA people will tell me how uh, dumb I am for saying that, but it could happen. But I just was thinking about this as far as like taxes go. You know, if you wanted to sell one Bitcoin, you have one Bitcoin. And let's just say, right, you know, it hits an all-time high at 69,000 just today. And even if you held it for over a year, for cap gains tax, it's roughly 20% for long-term cap gains. So you're looking at $14,000 just to pay the government so you don't get put in jail for five years or 11 years, like we just talked about. That sucks. Here's an alternative. And we just talked about this. You could do what I did, which is, you know, all the, the crypto that you have when you come here to Puerto Rico, uh, you're going to have to pay capital gains tax on that. But moving forward, you won't. You have to do some things in there. And I talked about this. I did two videos. I linked the second video in the description. I talk about my mistakes, my scripts, what I would do differently if I had to move to Puerto Rico again, and all the new, all the, the different stipulations and processes for no taxes. That's option one. You can go to Portugal. I believe there's no, there was no capital gains tax there. Oh, and then one of the other things is that I also do is I trust capital. Did you know? that when you use iTrust Capital, there's no cap gains for a Roth IRA. I have this. And people ask me, Rob, they're like, why, why do you still have your iTrust Capital Roth IRA when you don't, you're not gonna pay capital gains? It's because I don't know what's gonna happen with me here. Maybe I wanna move back to Texas. I love Texas, I love El Paso. And I'm like, ah, I don't really wanna be here. And you know, when that happens, well, guess what? The Roth IRA, when I wanna cash out, if I ever cash out, which I'm going to have to at some point, she's sweet Mary and Joseph, that means I'm going to have to pay capital gains. So if I put it in a Roth IRA, I don't have to. So a Roth IRA, if you do this now in America, I don't know, I mean, the Roth IRA is for Americans. There's other different programs throughout, throughout the world. I don't know what those are. I'm sorry. But just for Americans real quick, think about this. You have a limit every year. And depending on your age, mine's over 8,000 now because I'm old as dirt. But like every year, you can only buy $7,000 worth of crypto and put it in. Imagine that. So like 
if you were wanting to think about doing this, like I've had this for three years straight, it might be something to behoove you to take a look at it because all the prices are going to go up, especially after the halving. So if you're into crypto and you would like to not have those capital gains, a Roth IRA is a legal way to do things. And here's all the assets that you can do. And you know, and I, and this is where I actually have my gold and silver. They have Axie Infinity. That's crazy. Yeah, silver and gold. <laughs> so there's your options. There's a link in the description. And just for transparency, they, these are affiliate links. You don't have to use the affiliate links, but if you do, you get discounts uh, for signups. And there's no, there's not even any monthly fees. There is a one percent transaction fee if you want to trade within your, your IRA account. And if you do trade within your, your IRA account, that is also tax free. Crazy, right? Anyhow, something to think about. But that's it for today. So look, congratulations, everybody. We did it. And it wasn't easy. So I really I tip my hat to you for sticking around and going through this this slog because you you deserve it. You deserve everything that's coming to you. Congratulations. So anyhow, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing.